Who are you? I am Death. You come for me? I've long walked by your side. My name is Brefni Caribou Creighton, and I played the role of Death. Death came to see me this morning. We played chess. I will use this reprieve to arrange an urgent matter. What matter? I'm Marc Antoine Coulertis, and I played uh, the role of Antonius Bloch, also refers to as the knight. And when the Lamb broke the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for the space of half an hour. I've been a fan of Ingmar Bergman for a long time. I think he's one of the, the greatest contemporary artists of the 20th century, uh, not only in film, but he also works in theatre. And The Seventh Seal is a famous film. It's his most famous film. It was made in 1957. Did he show you the way? Not exactly. <laughs> was he a mute? No, sir. As a matter of fact, he was quite eloquent. Oh. The trouble is, what he had to say was most depressing. It's about a, uh, this man who comes back from the Crusades after 10 years and looking for his humanity again and after seeing this, like all that pain and bloodshed, looking for God again and if why does God even exist and we have all this violence with it. For you, love and God are the same. Thought helps me. So, suddenly the atmosphere becomes abundant and despair turns turns into life. It's like a reprieve. From a death sentence. So finding that relationship and that conflict and that tension between him and what he was looking for. Are you gonna play death? Imagine staring decent folk out of their minds with this garbage. It's a thriller. Uh, it was always hyper theatrical for me, and it's kind of, if I had to put a sound on it, I would say it's uh, a race against death to find the meaning of life. And that's how I directed it. We set it in a 360, so a lot of times where you're on stage and it's the regular conventional 2D, you have places to hide as an actor. 360, you really felt like you had, there was nowhere to hide. The other thing why I chose in the round was because there's so many scenes. And in the film, of course, you just cut, you're inside a wagon, you cut, you're in a castle, you cut, all of a sudden you're on a seashore. Be cut, there's a bird in the sky. We can't do that on, on, on stage, but we can do something else, which is we can create that bird and we can really draw on the audience's imagination. And it definitely helped for the whole organic ensemble flow of the piece mm -hmm. to have it to have it in the round and to have this kind of like consistent flow of energy into one thing into the next. Uh -huh. kind of in my back pocket for many years and I had to find the right context and uh, when I was invited as a guest director uh, here in Montreal to Concordia University I thought you know this could be a place that that would be really great it's an ensemble piece um, when I'm working with young actors I you know a whole group of them I would like to involve as many as possible and for all of, all of them to have a little shine to have like kind of a balance and then I kind of went into it blind in a way, innocently, like, oh, I'll just put this on stage, it'll be fine. <laughs> I get the screenplay online and I'll adapt it and I put in some other Bergman films, uh, some pieces from other Bergman films that reflect oh. similar themes to The Seventh Seal. But in fact, I found it quite a challenging journey and um, I think it's a challenge that I was ready for as a director. There were two other actors that were playing Death alongside of me and it really helped to have them there as well. You must be a severe master. I, I am, am a severe master. master. Between the three of us, I feel like we really were able to, you know, kind of, you know, harness and personify that that power, that like gravity of death. I could be here, but also here. You turn your you turn your back, and there's death. But you know, you turn the other way, and there's death. It's the thunderstorm that comes with the dawn. Yeah, it was definitely the biggest challenge I've faced so far as far as roles go, because it's, you know, how do you play a thunderstorm? I don't know. <laughs> Where are you going? Another challenge, uh, personally, as an actor, um, finding the right questions. How do you play someone who's been through the Crusades and is nobility and all those things, is trying to incorporate that in your own life and finding the right questions within you and uh, bring that on stage 
and finding that the, the power and the stillness that the knight needed. Why do you look so surprised? I steal from the dead. The reason that we do theater is goes back to the roots, uh, you know, of uh, theater as a, as a scene place by the Greeks. Yes. You were the one who ten years ago convinced me and my master of the necessity to join on crusade to the Holy Land. Now that I see you again, I realize the meaning of those ten years, which to me seems such a waste. And it's a place where we look at our, ourselves, look at our society, heal the ills that are in society, look at our own humanity, how far have we come 650 years ago, you know, from the Crusades. The times may change, but the questions somehow still say this, stay the same. What are you waiting for? Knowledge! You want guarantees. Call it what you like! Is it so terribly inconceivable to want to comprehend God with one's senses? Why does he hide behind a cloud of promises and unseen miracles? That is the test of your faith. Where does faith belong here in 2012? And I thought that was a really interesting, compelling thing that we, you know, we tried to take a look at through the lens of, you know, Ingmar Bergman. It's a very, it's a very current play that looks at the, at the human condition and the, the experience of creating it in a university context really brings up issues of ethics that, um, that I think are important in, as part of the education. I see them, Mia. Over there against the stormy sky. They're all there. The Smith and Lisa, the Knight and Raval, Johnson and Scat, they're all there. And Death, the stern master, invites them to dance. She leads them with her scythe and hourglass. But, but Scat dangles at the end with his lyre. And they dance a solemn dance away from the dawn. While the rain washes their faces cleans away the salt from their tears. <laughs>